Ya iya, Pak. Oke. Computers. Yeah, I will. Oh, wait, it's the yeah. answer. How can you... Hello. 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 Hi. Alderman Kelly, can you hear me? That's me. I'm here. <laughs> okay. Okay. Delayed. Delayed okay. <laughs> the meeting of the Personnel Administrative Affairs Committee will, will be starting at 7.02 on Monday, September 9th in the Aldermatic Chambers. Um, before I ask the clerk to call the roll, Alderwoman Kelly is participating via telephone, and under the state law that allows her to do so, she must state the reason why she cannot attend this evening, who is with her, if anyone, and if she can hear the proceedings. Alderwoman Kelly, can you hear us? I can hear you. Okay, can you tell us why you will be unable to attend and if anyone is with you uh, nobody is with me and um, I am uh, I just had a baby <laughs> 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 I, was, I was gonna figure out how to say that uh, <laughs> just became a mama I did okay yeah. okay all the woman stated the reason why she could not attend who was with her and that she could hear everyone so, we can hear you as well, and I will now ask the clerk to call the roll. Thank you. Thank um, you. Alderman Karen. Here. Uh, Alderman Clemens is here. Alderman Lopez. Here. Alderman Gidge. And Alderwoman Kelly. Here. Uh, also in attendance is Alderman Clee, Alderman Dowd, and Alderman Wilshire. Okay. Great. Thank you. So... We start off with uh, public comment, so I would just like to reiterate that per our NRO section 5-14B, public comment is limited to five minutes per person, and that we ask all speakers conduct themselves in a civil manner, and um, we will try to hold to that five minute rule because we do have a lot of people on the agenda today. And um, we'll get started. Whoever is looking to give public comment, please come to the microphone. Please state your name and your address so that the translators will have that documented. And then give us the reasons why you're here tonight. Thank you. Anyone? Good evening. <clears throat> My name is Jim Rafferty. I live in the city at Jackson Falls, uh, Ward 3. And <clears throat> I'm here and rise in favor of uh, your group putting the, or the Personnel Administration Committee? Yes. yes. Putting the sports betting initiative on the ballot in November for the citizens of our great city to vote on its approval. Um, just a little bit of background, I won't take five minutes, but um, we, the charity gaming facilities, there are two, and I think Kurt will be speaking here in a second, um, have done much to support uh, the city and its goals and its charities. Speaking for my facility, the River Casino and Sports Bar on High Street, uh, we've been in business for 12 years, first nine in Milford, and now three years in Nashua. And we've raised over $3 million for charities, 106 different charities, many, many of which are here in Nashua. Uh, we think we do a lot of good uh, public good, and we think we're really good for the millennials who want to stay in Nashua as in this important goal to keep millenniums, millennials in Nashua uh, rather than moving away. I think they enjoy our facility a great deal. So uh, I think we do a great public service. Uh, we would like to include sports betting uh, in this, in our facility. The way the statute, as approved and signed by the governor, uh, states, um, first, uh, 
vendors will will submit to the state, and there'll be five uh, uh, mobile licenses issued, uh, and then that will then those five mobile licenses will be then uh, worked down to ten retail facilities throughout the state. Um, Nashville is a perfect place for at least two of those um, um, facilities to be uh, uh, located. Uh, we think um, the, or I think certainly, that we will get a lot of cross-play for uh, our charities from sports betting. People wandering in, even though the benefactors of, of uh, sports betting will be the state, primarily the state of New Hampshire, uh, they'll get, I think, the biggest cut, um, and then operators will do well. But, um, you know, from a charity perspective, it's been raised that, well, the charities don't get a cut of sports betting. Where that's true in the statute, uh, we believe this, the crossplay will be tremendous of people winning tickets and betting on table games and uh, drinking and eating and having all sorts of fun at our facilities. So, um, as I think charity gaming has proven itself to be a benefit to our city. Uh, we should allow us to, you should proceed to put this on the ballot so the citizens can hopefully decide in favor of um, the uh, proposition being approved and allowing um, sports betting at the river, casino and sports bar. Any questions? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening. Kurt Mathias, Boston Billiard Club, 55 Northeastern Boulevard, Nashville, New Hampshire. I also, like Jim, would like you folks to please put the sports betting on the ballot for November. Um, as you all know, we have a charitable gaming facility at Boston Billiards on Northeastern Boulevard. We, too, support Nashua Charities for the most part. We have a big monster that just opened up down in Everett that's cut into our business for about 20% now. Massachusetts is working very, very hard to get their sports betting passed. And once the Encore gets casino or sports betting, ultimately that's just going to draw more traffic away from us. We're already down about 20% since the Encore opened. I imagine that that's a honeymoon period, and we're going to get some of that back as we go. At least we hope so. But we think sports betting will bring more traffic into the facility. It will also ultimately help charities keep the jobs here in Nashua. We employ 170 people in Nashua. Um, we want to keep the jobs here, and we think sports betting, it's a worldwide thing that's going on now, and it's going on illegally. And finally, our governments are making it illegal things so that people can come in and do it. And we think it will benefit not only the state, but it'll benefit the city, benefit the charities, benefit us as an operator. So we appreciate your consideration. Thank you very much. You have any questions? No. Oh, you can't ask them? No. Okay, <laughs> apologize. All right, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening. My Good name evening. is Gary Braun. I'm here to speak in opposition uh, to the proposed ordinance regarding the regulation of cats as strays and as nuisances. I do have a submission for the committee, and I'll be happy to hand that out at the conclusion. Um, the first thing I'm going to say is, is my perception of this law as a leash law for cats. I know there may be some disagreement there, but for folks who don't own cats, they're very independent animals. I can certainly, as one of the the basis of the proposed law is to uh, constrain cats to their, their owner's property, as I understand. And um, my cats, uh, I've had them since 19, cats since 1991. When I moved to the city, I lived here 28 years. Um, they are very independent creatures, and I have no way of constraining them to my property if I let them outside, except by putting up perhaps, a, they don't respond to voice commands. There's no fence they can't climb over. I'm not going to use a shock collar on them, though if people want to do that with their animals, they can, I choose not to. So even though the law is not 
structured or entitled uh, as a leash law for cats. And even though it doesn't expressly require cats to be constrained on a leash or by some other manner when they're outside of their home, um, the only practical way that I can keep my cat on my property if I don't, if I let it out, is to put it on a leash. And I just think, um, after 28 years and living in Nashua, and where that's never been required, uh, I don't know that it's required by any other municipality in this state. Um, I think that's an, a, a burden, and it's egregious. And especially when uh, the city is intending to seize the cat potentially as a stray or as a nuisance and potentially permanently deprive the owner of that cat. That happened to my cat back in 2017 when she was seized as a stray by the police. I almost lost her, and I fear the same thing is going to happen again if this law is adopted. So here's my, my dilemma and my problem. I either keep my cats inside all the time, which will drive all of us insane. I get rid of them, which is not going to happen. I put them on a leash because that's the only way I can keep them on my property when they're outside. Otherwise, they're going to be um, uh, running off of the property and running, violating the law every day that they're there. So that's all a big problem for me. And my wife and I have actually discussed, because this is the only practical viable alternative, is for us to move. Now, you may think I'm overreacting to that, and you may think you wouldn't react in that fashion. But part of the reason I'm telling that story is because I think the committee members in the city and the mayor and the sponsors of this law should realize how big of a deal this is for cat owners in Nashua. And it fundamentally and profoundly, and I say whether you support the new law or not, radically changes the city's approach to animal control. You know, never before in my 28 years have I known the city to require a cat to be constrained to its own property. Never have I understood the city to say that if your cat goes off your property, we're going to treat it as a stray and it's subject to seizure and impoundment by the police. Never have I understood the, po the city to say, you have to keep your cat on your property or we'll, we'll, it's, it'll be a nuisance potentially under some circumstance and we're going to seize it and impound it. That's all a seat change in what's going on here. And when I read the analysis under the proposed ordinance, and this is to NRO 93-6 subpart A, here's what the analysis says. The legislation clarifies the city's ordinance relative to the impoundment of dogs, cats, ferrets, and chickens. This amendment also makes explicit what is already implied by the ordinance that the dog officer or other authorized person may take into custody cats and ferrets believed to be astray or off-premises of their owners and either being a nuisance or are suspected of being diseased or injured. Let me read you the current ordinance, subpart A. So I read that as to say, this is all the status quo we're continuing. This is our practice and policy over the years. We're just clarifying it. Let's read this ordinance as it's presently configured. 93-6A. The dog officer or other authorized person shall take into custody and impound, one, any dog off the premises of its owner, which the dog off officer or per authorized person has reason to believe is a stray dog. Two, any dog off the premises of the owner of the dog without a current registration tag on his collar. Three, any female dog in heat and off the premises of the owner, and for any chicken off the premises of the owner. Where does it say cat in there, or ferret? Where does it say in there, impliedly or expressly, that a cat can be seized as a stray or because it's a nuisance? It doesn't. And so, in, in honesty and to be fair and to hold out what's actually going on to the public, uh, you, you know, to me, and I'm not saying this is intentional, but the analysis there doesn't tell you the correct facts. This is not a continuation of existing city policy. It is a, again, radical change, whether you support it or not, and let's at least call it what it is. So, if, if the committee is going to take this up tonight, and I think there are several reasons why it should table the ordinance and 
and get some additional information. But if it's going to take this up tonight, it should consider it as a big deal for cat owners and a big change in the existing law of the city. And that leads me to my next point. Why is this happening? I don't see, and I may be ignorant, I don't see a significant public health or safety issues or crisis in the city from stray cats or from nuisance cats or from cats running off of their property. What is it? And I think one of the things that this committee, maybe it is there and I'm just ignorant of it, but one of the things I think the committee ought to do is to commission the public health officer, not the Board of Public Health, but the public health officer of the city to give you a, a comprehensive, thorough report and to talk about why this is a public health and safety issue and why what I see to be fairly draconian legislation needs to be put through. Because as I'm going to speak about in a, a second, the law is currently, or proposed law is currently configured, does not contain an assured notice mechanism by which notice can be given to cat owners of the seizure of their cats. For example, like a dog licensing program, where you compel people to register their cat with the city. I think it's a bad idea to have licensing law, but at least if you're going to pass this ordinance and you compel people to register their cats with the city, the police have a database where they know who the cat's owner is when it comes in and is seized, and they can give notice to the cat owner before that cat owner loses their, their property and their animal. Um, that to me is fundamental fairness, it's decency, it shows compassion, and otherwise not having a mechanism as part of the law to assure that the cat owner knows that the government has taken their cat is cruel. And it magnifies what I think is already a difficult and bad law and, 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 and imposes these burdens on cat owners and then if they can't meet that burden they lose their cat, and there's no way uh, for the city to, to notify them. You get it to me, and I think this is a constitutional and legal issue as well. You have to, in this regard, treat dog owners and cat owners the same way. They both have to have, a, 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 be assured of being provided, and almost as a, on a guaranteed basis. And if you have the dog licensing law, I think provides this protection. You've got to have a guaranteed compulsory way to give cat owners notice of the seizure of their cat, if you leave it up to a voluntary system like an ID that the cat owner can get or not, they're not going to get it. Uh, people do what they have to do. That will leave a gap for those people who don't get the ID and they're at risk of losing their animals. I am mindful of my time here, ma'am. The other thing is, under the analysis of the ordinance, it, it's, it says a fiscal or financial note, it says none. I'm confused by that. I don't know if the city has undertaken an analysis of what the costs of this program are going to be. I'll give you my opinion. If you start to treat cats as strays, those cats who are wandering around as strays at the city, if this, if this ordinance is adopted, will vastly outnumber wandering dogs. How many loose dogs do you see in the city? Hardly any. That's probably a testament to the good job of the animal control officer. Cats you see all the time. I think the, the animal control officer and the police have a full-time job already. I think you're going to have to, and, and at least you should investigate this point and table the ordinance until you know. The police should come in and tell you what kind of additional Im imposition or burden this is going to be on their time and their resources. I don't think the animal control officer can take on this added burden. It seems reasonable to me to assume you'll have to hire another ACO full-time or part-time. I understand the ACO makes about 50 grand, so if you put in the benefits and, the, and all of that at 75, 100, that's a significant additional burden that the city may have to take on um, if they're going to adopt this law. I think the city's chief, the financial officer, get, should get involved in this in terms of kind of quantifying and confirming those costs and he should also give you some indication of where the revenue is going to come to hire that person if you need him or her. So again, for that additional reason, I'd ask that you table the ordinance for tonight. You go and get that information. You make it available to yourselves, to the full board. And 
to the public on the substance. I don't think we should burden the police with this. They have a lot better things and more important things to do. Let's let them deal with the opioid crisis and gang activity and violent crime, not chasing stray cats. It's not a good use of city resources to spend our tax dollars there. These police officers need to focus on important things. And remember, the ACO is only a daytime job. He doesn't work on the nights or the weekends. So line patrol officers will have to respond to stray cat calls on nights and weekends. That's going to take away from patrolling our streets and preventing crime. Finally, I'm going to say this, it may not resonate completely, but because of the lack of a notice provision and the guaranteed lack of guaranteed notice to a cat owner whose animal is seized, I think this has constitutional problems, the ordinance is proposed. I was a lawyer for 30 years. I know I'm biased, but I think it, if, if adopted as, as written, the ordinance, the proposed ordinance, bringing in cats and ferrets, will be, has a good chance, good susceptibility of being challenged in court and legal grounds, including constitutional grounds. The committee and the board ought to be mindful of that. They ought to ask corporation counsel to give them a written legal opinion as to the constitutionality of the proposed ordinance on at least three points. Fourth Amendment unlawful seizures, and that's written down here so you can follow it afterwards. Equal protection under the federal constitution and due process protections under the 14th Amendment to the uh, federal constitution and various provisions of the state constitution. That should be carefully taken up, carefully prepared. You folks should be able to look at it the full board ought to be able to look at it and ought to be released to the public. So until you have all of that information, the legal opinion, the cost review, and the public health report, I think you ought to respectfully uh, table uh, the ordinance for tonight, get that information, and take it up at a later meeting. Thank you. Any questions? No, they can't ask questions. You're welcome. Anyone else? No one else? Okay. Communications. Uh, there are none. Okay. We have um, Animal and Dog Park Advisory Committee. Mayor, do you have your people? All right. Please come forward. If you hand it to the oh, Yes, he'll take care of it. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Oh, thank you. All right, Madam Chair, thank you very much for having us. Thank um, you. As you know, the board, the city, recently established the Animal and Dog Park Advisory Committee uh, with a couple of purposes. First, to work to establish a downtown dog park. Uh, number two, to advise the city generally on animal and dog issues. And the my task pursuant to that is to find at least two people from the public who wish to serve on the committee. And I have nominated uh, the two people you see before you. Uh, first, June Lemon, immediately on my left. I think she's known to many of you. A resident, longtime resident of the city uh, on Manchester Street. She's written for the Telegraph for a long time, a public interest, uh, human interest column. Uh, she's previously worked for Digital Corporation, uh, now works down at uh, UMass Lowell, and I think most importantly is very interested in working to establish the dog park. And therefore, I believe she will be a very good addition to our new committee. Um, the other nominee is, of course, uh, Amber Logue, whose idea it was to form the committee, who has very effectively uh, advocated uh, for a, dog, a downtown dog park and has been very effective in articulating why this would be of a great benefit to the city. Uh, she is a business owner and has owned more than one business in the city. 
She lives downtown or close to it on Lock Street in the at 20 Lock in the former residence of Diane Sheehan, a historic house on Lock Street. And she um, has uh, convinced a lot of people and has brought to light the need for a, for a dog park for our inner city downtown residents. And so she also will be a great addition to the to the committee. And uh, that's really all I have to say. Uh, I will just turn it over to June and then Amber to briefly uh, give you a little uh, statement as to why they think the committee is important and why they'd like to serve on it. Okay, June, we'll start with you and uh, give us a little idea as to why you would like to be involved in this new committee. Well, I didn't know anything about the dog park until I heard about it in the paper that Amber was working on it, and I went to her and said, I would love to work on this because I have a dog. I've always had dogs. It's been This is a new dog to me, the dog we have now, and I am spending so much of my time at the Benson dog park, and I would like to spend more time in a facility like that here in the city. And I also think it would be wonderful to be able to go out and walk my dog in the city and then go to a dog park where he can run and play with other dogs. Um, and you meet the nicest people at the dog park. I mean, they're, I think it would be a great boon to the city, particularly if it's connected to the walking trails. It will be great for people to walk their dogs, stop and have their dogs play. And plus, I love dogs. And a dog that has a park to play in and is socialized with other dogs is usually not a problem animal. Dogs that get enough exercise are happy animals. And they're, then you have a lot less reports of you know snarly dogs, unhappy dogs in the city. So that's why I'd like to be on the dog park committee. Okay, so we'll start with the committee. Any questions from committee members? Alderman Lopez. So it says here your cat's name is Anubis. <laughs> <laughs> Consider Cerebrus when you were named. <laughs> no, we did not. Okay. So likes the dog more less than cats. <laughs> My daughter named both our pets, and I, I thought it was extremely funny that she named our our cat after the dog god of the uh, dead. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else from the committee? Alderman Quee. Yes, I'd like to um, put my support um, for the recommendation of Ms. Lemon and so that I don't have to bother you twice. <laughs> <laughs> also for, for um, Ms. Loge, um, both, of, both of them happen to be my constituents in Ward 3 and um, I've been impressed with absolutely with both of them. And before Amber gets a chance to speak, I want to tell you that the presentation that she gave um, was incredible. It, she did a lot of work, um, and we couldn't ask for a better person on it. And I think both of them will be great. So thank you. Anyone else? OK, thank you, June. Oh, mm -hmm. Now, before we go to uh, Heather, oh, oh, you got yeah, all no, I just down. wanted to thank both of them for Through coming Amber. forward. I think it's a great idea. Um, and several mornings I get to go out and drive around the city and I see everyone out walking their dogs and um, my daughters all have dogs <laughs> and uh, dog park is a great idea they, you know, they're nice they're great social animals and they and they love to run around with other dogs and and get that sense of freedom and play yeah and before we go to Amber who again was the originator of the idea of not only the committee but the dog park itself, I wanted to mention that in the New York Times uh, back about a week ago, August 31, there was a column by Frank Bruni, Dogs Will Fix Our Broken Democracy. <laughs> and the, the, the uh, New York Times. <laughs> Is, and the subheading, we need more reasons and prods to step outside of our narrowest selves, which is what we just heard uh, that, uh, you know, uh, it will create more social cohesion in, in Nashua if we can make this a success. So with that, I give you uh, Amber. Okay. And thank you, committee, for, um, for hearing from us today. Um, I could go on for a number of reasons why. I think everybody understands uh, why I want it to be here. Um, and more so is the dog park is exciting. That I think um, 
there's a huge rally behind that. That's the fun thing to talk about. Uh, and as much as I would love to go on, um, I think it's also important to talk about the not so fun side of it, um, which is really the bigger reason why I'm excited um, uh, to be considered on the committee is the education around the proper animal waste disposal and really the long-term effects of what that could do for our community um, in terms of reducing the pollution. If, if we can come up with a way to educate um, and dispose of it properly as a as a citywide effort, and really come together in that in that um, in that respect. In the long term, we could potentially reduce the pollution in our watershed, water, soil, and waterways, um, which you know a dog park will make the citizens who own dogs a lot happier, um, and also those who don't don't want to see them. Um, but also in the long term, it could have a greater effect in terms of being able to make more use out of our waterways. Okay. Any questions? Motion. I, I'm not a dog person, but I really appreciate people who are, and, and the fact that you're willing to step up and do this. I, uh, you know, my sister has a dog, my mother, you know, they all love their dogs. I'm just not a dog person, but I totally get it. I, I just get how people, sometimes their dogs are their best friends, and, and you know, thank you for stepping up and doing something creative and, and good for the people of Nashville. It's great. Both of you, thank you. Anyone else? Alderman Lopez. Um, so for me, I am excited about the Animal Advisory Board, no, not just because of the dog park, but also because I do not want to have to repeat the brown shovel experience. Um, but for me, particularly in Ward 4, as, as the more urban areas in the city start to get, become more urban and they get denser and more and more people are living there, animals are important for people's mental health. Like That's why you have um, service animals. That's why you have dogs that are therapy dogs. People do better with companions, and dogs make very good companions. But when you have a city that's growing and you have more and more people sharing the same amount of space, you need somebody who's attentive to both of those things when you're planning and when you're overseeing um, the creation of new initiatives to support that. Um, and particularly, I think Amber is very well suited for that. Um, she and I have been working with the veterans for years, decorating Christmas trees and you know uh, making their hallways look a little bit better organizing events and activities of that nature. We've worked together with Positive Street Art, and I think Amber really gets it that a city, in order to keep being a city and a community, needs to have more than just great lights and, I mean, ideally it has perfect sidewalks, but great <laughs> lights and perfect sidewalks. It also has to have that sense of community that comes from initiatives like this and that sense of companionship that, has, that comes from, um, from having companions like dogs, cats, that kind of stuff. Um, so I want to thank Amber for all of the effort she's put in over the years um, and also for stepping forward to take on this challenge as well. Thank you. Alderman Cole. Thank you. I just want to thank you both for coming forward and for volunteering your time. I too would like to thank you for stepping up because this is a brand new committee. So um, all the members that are going to be part of this, you are going to be setting the standards for future and uh, I'm a dog lover as well, so I appreciate the fact that we could have another dog park in the community. We will take up your uh, recommendation later on, and then uh, you'll be notified as to when to attend the board meeting to be sworn in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next is uh, position for city clerk. Hey, Mayor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, as you know, the city clerk is a very important position in city government. The city clerk runs the elections in the city, not only our city elections, but state elections, national elections, primaries, everything. Has to supervise all of the ward workers and train them on an annual basis uh, to make sure that the wards function properly. The city clerk also, of course, is at all of uh, our aldermanic meetings and uh, helps to arrange the order of business uh, and supervises many other activities, dog licensing, marriages, uh, all of the activities that go on down at the city clerk's office. We've had a number of quite 
uh, people who have served for quite a period of time, and I th and I think very effectively. Uh, we've had Tricia Piazzo most recently, but before that, Paul Bergeron, who was in for 15 or 16 years, Eleanor Benson, who was in about who was a uh, uh, the clerk for about that period of time. I don't know if anybody remembers, but Lionel Gilbert before that, who is there for quite some period of time, and all have have served the city well. And my nominee, Sue Lovering, is in that tradition. She's worked for the city for a long time, first for the legal department, which I think she began in 1989, and worked, has worked now for the Board of Aldermen since 1996. So she knows all of the people active in city government, knows the aldermanic process and the process of legislation inside and out, and also will be very good at the customer uh, service portion of the job, where we know that she will do a great job in interacting with people. She's very friendly and very outgoing and will uh, enjoy working with the many citizens who come to the city clerk's office. In addition, one thing we want to try to accomplish is to be more active in reaching out to potentially new voters, get more people registered in some of our neighborhoods, schools, and the like. Uh, Sue will do a great job. Ms. Lovering will do a great job at that as well. Uh, the one area that uh, she needs uh, to learn more thoroughly has to do with the elections but she has already attended the first year of the city clerk certification and has been working with uh, Tricia uh, down in the city clerk's office since uh, I nominated her several weeks ago. Tricia is going to be leaving on the 17th, and that's why I made the nomination early. We have another, we have a city election coming up, and I made it effective September 17th, so Sue can take over uh, on, the, on the day when, uh, when Ms. Pietsu leaves. So I know you all know her very well. I know she'll do a great job as city clerk, and I believe she will be in the fine tradition of the other city clerks we've had here in Nashua who've done a great job of servicing both the city and the, the residents of Nashua. All right, you're up, Ms. Lovering. Thank you very much. I would just like to begin by thanking the mayor for this opportunity. It is an honor to be sitting next to you this evening, mayor, and to come before you this evening for your consideration. As the mayor stated, last week marked my 30th year with the city. I have enjoyed working for the city and consider City Hall as my second home. I believe my knowledge that I have gained and experience here with both the day-to-day -day operations of the city as a whole and certainly the legislative process provides a solid foundation for me to build upon. And as the mayor stated, I do realize there is a learning curve as certainly we'll be focusing on the elections. And I am fortunate to have some strong working relationships that I've built over the years with both past and present employees. City Clerk Piazzo certainly has been very helpful over the last few weeks and is only a phone call away up at the Secretary of State's office. And also, I have a very good working relationship with the three attorneys upstairs. And I have also recently spoken with former City Clerk Paul Bergeron, who has expressed his support for the mayor's nomination and also has offered guidance and assistance. So. I feel I have the recipe for success. I'm looking forward to the personal growth in this opportunity, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay, committee members. Ald oh, oh boy. <laughs> okay, we'll start with in Alderman Kelly. <laughs> thank you. Um, I do not have a question, and just a comment. Um, thank you for bringing Sue forward, um, Mr. Mayor. I think she's an incredible um, person for the job, and I have not been with the city for 30 years, but in the two years that I have served, she has been an incredible resource for me, and I 100% agree on uh, her ability to work with people and get you the answers that you need and do it in such a polite and 
um, warm, warm way. So I look forward to uh, seeing her take on this role, and I appreciate all her work so far. All right, thank you. Alderman Clements. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I think you're a wonderful candidate. I couldn't think of anybody better um, to serve in that role. And, um, you know, I have no doubt that uh, you will serve the city well as you've served this board of aldermen well uh, and through that the city in your last 30 years. Um, you have my full support. And um, I think with um, Trish up at, in, like you said, with Trish up in Concord and with Paul Bergeron willing to help you out, you'll get through this election and, uh, and you'll be fine from there. So thank you very much, Alderman Clemens. Right. Alderman Lopez, Swiss for us. Yep. Um, so there's staff down in the city clerk's office, and you're going to be managing them. Will you be ruling them with the same <laughs> iron fist in a velvet glove? Follow <laughs> <laughs> up question: Will there still be Kit Kats in the bowl? <laughs> <laughs> Who puts the Kit Kats in the bowl? <laughs> I believe the candy, the candy fairy is still some kind of alive. magic. <laughs> well. Well, I want to thank you for stepping forward and being crazy enough to take this on. Um, equally, as I, as I thanked uh, Patricia for doing it, um, the city clerk's office is a very big job and it's very difficult. And the fact that you're, you're willing to take all that on and also um, engage in outreach for voter registration, I think it's just great. Um, I've enjoyed working with you on the board of aldermen. Um, I've found you to be very approachable, very grounded, but also very, very knowledgeable. So... Thank you for coming forward. Thank you very much, Alderman Lopez. Alderman Bucket for extra Kit Kats over here. Well, I don't get a chance to vote for you here. I, I'm assuming that you'll get a positive nod here, and then I get the chance at the Board of Aldermen. Um, but it, it's bittersweet. To have you leave is really going to be hard. Thank you. Alderman Dowd. Yeah, I have no doubt whatsoever that Sue will be successful as a city clerk because her professionalism and her hard work ethic that I've witnessed over many years is going to bring great uh, things to the city clerk's office. And um, I, again, I, I wish her very well. And the only regret is that she won't be the person that we call every five minutes with the things going on on the board of aldermen. But again, she's not that far away. <laughs> so uh, best of luck. Alderman Wilshire. Thank you. Um, I just want to echo what everyone else has said. Sue has been here since I've been on the board. I don't want to say how many years that is, <laughs> but it's not 30. Um, <laughs> it, it is a big job, the city clerk, and um, so Sue's up for it. Thanks. She'll be great. I, I can't think of anyone else myself that would do a better job down there at this point than Sue Lovering. And uh, thanks, Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> well, so when I talked Sorry, to you the pleasure. other day, <laughs> I told her I had some questions, and I know she'll do a good job because I remember when Sue started. That's when I was already here, about 20-some odd years. But um, I, I just had a couple of questions for you, and I already gave, I gave her a hint. <laughs> be thinking about right <laughs> and I've been thinking <laughs> and you have okay so one of, so one of the things that um, and I and I think you've already answered that with this uh, reaching out to voters but one of it was what you thought your priorities were going to be in the next 90 days uh, especially with an election coming up certainly and I think um, my goal in the next 90 days is to focus on the upcoming elections and get as much knowledge, um, and also to get to know the employees and the day-to-day -day procedures in that office. Certainly, I need to focus on the upcoming elections. Um, I already mentioned Deputy City Clerk Piazzu, Deputy, excuse me, City Clerk Piazzu, and former City Clerk Paul Bergeron. The new Deputy City Clerk uh, was a former town clerk and has had uh, first hands on with elections in her town. And three employees downstairs have also worked here in the city for elections. So a wonderful team she has built. And my goal is just to get to know them better, get to know the process, work together, and strive for a smooth transition. And 
learn as I go. One of the questions I had, Alderman Lopez already asked about uh, your managing style and how tough you would be because you're going to be managing, what, five or more employees. So I won't ask that one. But the other thing is, um, with your new position, you're going to be doing a lot of work. Uh, you, you have to work in the office where you really had the uh, capability of working remotely, which was great for you and great for us because you could do double duty mm -hmm. if needed. So how do you feel um, that's going to... How are you going to survive that? Is it going to well, be a difficult thing for you, especially come election time when you're up at two in the morning and <laughs> <laughs> don't go to bed till midnight? <laughs> I will say, Alderman Karen, that one of the reasons I left the legal department to come to work for the Board of Aldermen was because of the flexibility. I had small children at the time. Yep. I started here what I call BC before children. They are now raised. <laughs> I am yep. a grandmother. Um, <laughs> so that is not as important to me and as of value as it was at that time. And I think I balanced the work and my dedication here to my family life. And certainly I understand that this requires to come in before 8 to get everything up and running and to stay for however long it takes, and I will continue to bring the worth ethics that I think I've demonstrated over the years and dedicate any hours that are necessary. Good. I, it, you have done a fabulous job. Thank you very You've been, much. You know, and I've worked with you in, in different Many aspects areas. of your career, so I know that you will uh, jump into this, but I think it was important for you to think about some of the things because she got nervous. Friday when I said I have some questions, but you answered them truthfully, and I, I know that you will uh, give 110%. Thank you so very much. You're great. So we will make um, our decision um, later on, and you know the drill. Thank you. I would just like to thank the board. It has been a pleasure. It has been a true pleasure to support each and every one of you and the past aldermen. I have a deep respect for this process, for this room. It certainly has been an honor. And I think the win-win in this is I still get to support the board, albeit in a different role. I still get to come here and be with you. Good. So thank you very much. Well, thank you, Sue. So. Thank you. I prefer type 32. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mayor, we've got the Conservation Commission. Ms. McCarthy. for the Conservation Commission is Gloria McCarthy. I think she, she is familiar to everyone. Gloria has worked, lived in the city a long time, worked for our school department for, for a number of years uh, at the Broad Street School, and uh, is very interested in serving on the Conservation Commission, commi commission, helping to promote the use of green space, the preservation of green space in the city. Uh, she and Brian have been dedicated to this cause for a long, long time, and we all know the work that uh, Brian did, but Gloria was always in the background encouraging uh, his, his, uh, his direction, and with, especially with respect to the, uh, the many, many accomplishments regarding conservation and the, the trails and everything else that has been established in Nashua over the years. So, so I know that Gloria will do a very good job as a Conservation Commission member. We are nominating her first as an alternate, where she will, of course, learn the job. Uh, and hopefully then uh, when the time comes, she will be able to serve as a full commission member. But on the Conservation Commission, often the alternate does sit. And therefore, she, I expect that she'll play a very significant role in the Conservation Commission, even in the position as an alternate. Thank you. Gloria. Well, yes, Gloria McCarthy. I've lived in Nashville since 1980, and Mayor John, Don just, just said everything I was going to say, so <laughs> <laughs> I can make my presentation short and sweet. I've been here for a long time and hope to uh, continue the work that, that Brian did in the past. Um, it's important to have green space in the city. 
As you can notice in the spring, we have bears looking for bird feeders because we're taking up a lot of their habitat. So it's important to leave some spaces for, for natural plants and animals to live and be sure we can balance that with the rights of the landowners that want to improve their land. So hopefully I can help you with the Conservation Commission to do that. Right. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Any questions? Alderman Kelly. Um, again, not a question, um, but a comment. And I just wanted to thank uh, Gloria for coming forward for this. It has been incredibly eye-opening for me being on this commission and seeing the work that was done by Brian um, and being able to continue that work. So I look forward to serving on the committee with you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Alderman Lopez. Um, so I appreciated your comments uh, in your email with regards to the ecosystems within the city, um, particularly because of last year and the, the squirrel holocaust where for some reason they were everywhere and <laughs> something was definitely out of balance. I was just wondering if there's any particular like issues you think we should be addressing, like bees or... I'm not really crazy about the hornets that have taken up residence on my porch because one stung me, but mm -hmm. other than that, um, well, we need to have have the wild wildflowers and plants so that the bees will have the opportunity to do what bees do, mm -hmm. and uh, we you know should with the birds with, and the birds yes the birds and the bees as I was taught um, and um, you know the um, they need to be we need to be aware of the pesticides we use to be sure that we don't continue to destroy bee colonies. Okay, thank you, and thank you for being willing to step forward. I appreciate it. Thanks. Alderman Wilshire. I don't have a question. I just want to thank Gloria for her willingness to, you know, be a part of this committee and and uh, just being here. And thank you. Alderman Dowd. Yeah, I, too, want to thank you for stepping up. And I know you and the rest of your family have all been deeply involved in conservation and conservation land here in the city. And uh, it, it, that's critically important uh, to have the green space and stuff. So thank you very much. Yes, I'd like to say thank you also. And, and I know a lot of people will say that you are continuing Brian's work, but I don't believe that to be true. I think you're starting on your own path of your own work. So thank you very much. Alderman Clemens. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Gloria, for stepping up um, to this. And if there's one thing that I know, um, about you from knowing you in the past is that when you dedicate yourself to something, you're all in. And so I know that um, you'll do well on this uh, committee. So thank you for stepping forward. So everyone has said the same thing, and I think it's wonderful, Gloria, that you are willing to do this and be part of something that you really believe in. So uh, we will take up your nomination later on. And hopefully, you'll be all set for the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. OK, cultural connections, Mia. Uh, Madam Chair, this is uh, Eric Druard, who I am nominating for the Cultural Connections Committee. Uh, and also, um, we didn't meet before the meeting, so I didn't really realize that you were here. Uh, but also, um, uh, um, for the Cultural Connections Committee as well. And I'm, we didn't get to meet before the uh, before the meeting, so I apologize for that. But um, with Eric, uh, we have a, he has a very extensive resume, who, uh, he's a native of France, uh, has been in the United States for a long time. You can see his resume, very deep academic resume, as well as a uh, business experience. He uh, is, of course, fluent in French, has been chair of the Club Richelieu at various times, including the present. The goal of the, of the Cultural Connections Committee is to create a sense of community among 
all of the people of Nashua, many of whom come from different uh, ethnic backgrounds. Uh, we have been a city of immigrants for a long, long time. We're officially a welcoming city, and this is part of what we are trying to accomplish to make every person who comes to Nashua feel part of the community and welcome, accepted, and valued. Uh, the, of course, uh, Mr. Drewhart's background being from France is uh, reflective of the, at least, uh, the, the French background we have via Canada, at least. Uh, he is, he is uh, fluent in French, as I said. He's been president of the Club Richelieu and therefore will do a great job in helping us to uh, achieve the goal of uh, supporting and including all of the people of Nashua, whether they uh, have been here for a long time or whether they're, they've just uh, come recently. Um, and so that is, so I think he's a great nominee. Now, non, Nonyam uh, Egbuano is another a great uh, nomination. I had not seen her as I apologize. We'd not uh, gotten together today and I didn't realize she was coming tonight. Uh, but she's a retired public educator and she has very varied experience in community and, uh, uh, and in, in organizing. She is a mother, grandmother, and an active member of the Main Street Methodist Church. Uh, she's part of the Nashua Interfaith Council, which itself is doing a lot to make sure that uh, the church members and community members in general are all included in, in the city. So she's been active there, and that's a, an important part of uh, her history. Um, she's part of the Granite State Organizing Project. Uh, I think I've seen her sing in at various functions, including at uh, uh, Martin Luther King Day, the Nashua Interfaith Choir. She sings there. And she is a member of the Y. So I think she will do a great job in helping to reach out to some of our newer residents, uh, again, making it clear that people of, uh, from every nation who come here, uh, we definitely have new uh, resident immigrants who've come to Nashua in the last few years. Uh, she will help us uh, make sure that uh, we welcome them and uh, make sure that it is clear that we include uh, everybody in Nashua and we want everyone to succeed and have a great life for themselves and their family here in our community. So um, I think both nominees will do a great job. And with that, I give you uh, our two nominees. Okay. We'll start with you, Eric. Would you like okay. to? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, I'm here really as the president of the Club Richelieu, as you heard. Uh, I've been in Nashua for the past uh, 20 years, uh, teaching at Rivier and now teaching at uh, Assumption College. Uh, I'm not teaching French, but, uh, <laughs> but business. Uh, but it really, I'm, I'm very committed to the, to the cultural, multicultural uh, connections. Uh, I've attended already uh, many of their meetings. I'm looking forward to the Multicultural Festival uh, next uh, Sunday. Um, we had a meeting just to illustrate of the club on Sunday, yesterday, and we had two uh, visitors uh, from uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo, recent refugees that have come to, uh, to Nashua. French-speaking uh, persons uh, with their families, and this is what I would like to, uh, to be uh, useful for in terms of my knowledge of the French language uh, and helping uh, some of our newest residents to, uh, to get acclimated to this wonderful city of Nashua. Any questions? Oh. Alderman Lopez. Um, so it wasn't too long ago that I was chairing the Cultural Connects con Committee. Um, and we were organizing cultural festivals, so it's nice to see that that's all continuing, particularly the Rich Lou Club um, being engaged. I think at the time where I was chairing, there was this perception that cultural connections was really more about newcoming cultures and minorities, and I think for real cultural um, competency, 
to really see different cultures come together, you have to approach all of them where they come from and where they are. And I know that the French uh, culture has been very strong in Nashua for many, many years. Um, and that doesn't just make it a, a, an older heritage. It also makes it a foundation for new coming um, Nashua residents, like you said, from the, the Republic of Congo and maybe Haitians and other places where they find something familiar and if it's not just language, but in culture and taste um, in history. So I'm really happy to see all of that um, continuing to work. And I'm happy to hear that you're saying the Richelieu Club is also going to be a very active member. Thank you. Any comments? Yeah, I, I have a question, and I'll, I'll pose it to both, um, if, if I may, to, to both uh, nominees. nominees. But... What, um, in your estimation, what do you think Nashua's biggest area of improvement needs to be or, or should be when it comes to um, engaging in getting multicultural things together? And I'm not wording that correctly, but what what is our biggest shortcoming, I think? That was my question. I, I'm not so sure there are shortcomings, but because, I mean, even the, the multicultural com committee is very large and includes, you know, public health, uh, people involved with the adult learning center. Um, so I think it's just being known and, and being open to uh, engage with these new immigrants. Um, I wouldn't say that there are shortcomings. I think we're a very um, uh, open uh, community. I don't think there are any, uh, you know, minority or, or immigrant related uh, problems. I don't see them actually. But uh, I think it's just staying aware and, and engaged with, you know, the, the potential needs of uh, these new these new immigrants, of course the you know the French Canadian uh, heritage and uh, the French Canadian descent uh, has been a very important role in the development of, of Nashua. But we have new French speaking immigrants uh, that need to be uh, at, and their needs need to be addressed. Do you, do you want me to? Sure, me? yes, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I, I am actually representing the president of the National Area Interfaith Council uh, at the Cultural Connections Committee level. And um, from the very first day that I joined in the past year, this is my second year, um, I actually contributed a little bit to this idea of making sure that Nashua is a welcoming city. And I didn't mince words uh, from the faith background. Being welcoming means truly being welcoming, not just by word, mm. but by action. And so, um, some suggestions were brought up, we discussed, we rubbed minds together about if we say we are welcoming, we should reflect it when we see new faces, strangers among us. And some of the cultures that are already maybe um, established are attracting more people from other cultures. They feel confident that, okay, Nashua is a city that is welcoming. And let me say that I have seen through the um, multicultural festivals that I participated in for the first time last year, that really more and more people are coming out and interacting through such uh, opportunities. So creating more and more opportunities for such interactions is what um, I think our business is at the Cultural Connections Committee level. I see that we are doing well. Already many people are looking forward to coming there on Sunday, this Sunday, at St. Patrick's Gym to participate this year because they've heard so much about how 
we enjoyed the one of last year. So creating more and more awareness when such an event is coming up is something that I think uh, we'll have to work on because publicity is very important for us to get many more cultures that probably don't think that they are welcome to know that everybody is welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Alderman Klee, you have a question for Eric? Well, not so much a, a question, but to uh, make a statement. And I'm sorry, my I have a problem with my throat, so my voice is gonna go in and out all night. <clears throat> um, Mr. Duard is a um, constituent of mine, and he's been very active in um, beautification of the area within his his community. He has remained active. Um, I think he's good representation of what multicultural um, means here in the city of Nashua, and I strongly also recommend him for this position. Um, I, I don't really know you very well, but your answer was perfect. And I, Nanyam, Nanyam is Nanyam. my name. <laughs> Nanyam, <laughs> yes. thank you so much. Your your answer was perfect, and um, continue to be bold. Thank, thank you. you so much. Anyone else? Okay, thank you, Eric. Now, did you have another question, Actually, Alderman Lowe? Actually, Nanyam, because like, can you just say your name? Because everyone's like dancing around it. It's kind of <laughs> dark. Nanyam. But your last name? Nanyam, then Ebuano. Okay, Ebuano. The last Ebuano. name, yeah. We gotta practice that. <laughs> we, can't, we can't just like skip around like no. Nah, let's and, not say the whole and, name. It's and hard. actually, um, because of that difficulty, noni is the That's simple the way, number. which is the way I am fondly known and called. So more people at church, at all the groups, interfaith, it's noni that I'm known by. So maybe that that comes very easy. Yeah. Okay. So now it's your turn to tell us why you would like to be on this committee. Um, I was actually assuming that I'm already on the committee because from, <laughs> the, <laughs> from the very first day, I've been active and uh, doing stuff with every other member of the committee. So, and when uh, uh, at the committee, we, we were, I was asking, uh, what does it involve uh, being invited for this kind of interview. They told me nothing, it's just <laughs> so. Uh, so I am um, assuming that active participation, which is what I've been, I've been used to during my work life and uh, now as a retiree, I jump in, I say my mind, I bring in my um, experience to bear and we keep interacting. So uh, the Cultural Connections Committee is giving me another opportunity to continue being a very active member of the community age, notwithstanding. <laughs> okay, do we have any questions? And I thank the mayor for, <laughs> for uh, nominating me because um, it is that same way of jumping in that I got to know the mayor that at any event, I'm able to say, oh, mayor is here. So thank you very much for appointing me, even with the difficult name. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Alderman Lopez. Well, you know, they used to call me Don C. Hess. It, so they've had difficulty with my name, too. Uh, you see, they divide. <laughs> sometimes they divide it into three. three. <laughs> Um, so that's what Lopez usually calls me. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what I call you. Um, so committee members, if you participate in a committee, you don't always need a title to be heard, especially in the Cultural Connections Committee. They're very receptive. They listen to all the members. Um, there are appointed members who can vote on specific issues, like how to represent the, com the committee. Um, and I know that the interfaith community is one of them, and you were already their appointee. Um, but this would be nominating you to get a two-year term where you're representing yourself. Yeah. Does that mean there would be another uh, appointee made by Interfaith to take over your other spot? Um, so far, I didn't see that anybody was actually prepared to add additional responsibilities what, to what they already bear. So Rabbi John of the Temple Beth Abraham, mm -hmm. I uh, was like very pleased to hear that I was prepared to uh, come and serve 
at this level. So if after two years there's somebody willing to do it, I would like another person to have the opportunity. Otherwise, I'll continue doing it. So, Mayor, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe we're giving you or recognizing you for your own term, and then that will free up a space for the interfaith because the interfaith council actually has an appointee as well. Correct. Okay. So keep someone in mind. That's not something I don't think we oversee the interfaith's designee. They just pick one, and they pick you. It went so well that they wanted to set you up as a regular citizen on the committee, and now you have your own term, your own vote, and another person can be involved in the, the interfaith. Um, the reason I brought the interfaith community up particularly um, is because one of the worst kept secrets, I think, uh, in public health right now is that we're facing a, a tremendous surge in suicides, and I think barriers to faith, religion, culture are preventing word from really getting out that there are resources for this and that we need to be inclusive and engaging so that people don't feel isolated and without hope and without, you know, helpless. What can we do as a city to reach across cultural barriers to address this issue? Um, let me jump in right away and say that um, through the Interfaith Council, I have been nominated for a special pastoral care specialist training that was um, a collaboration between the Integrated Delivery Network and uh, the MLS Institute for having the spirituality components as part of the healthcare um, delivery to address some of the uh, problems that probably has have uh, caused people to get to that extent of committing suicide or people who are struggling with the opioid uh, issue, uh, substance use, um, substance misuse. So uh, my project was on the area of spirituality and fortunately the, the church has given me more platform to work with the MLS Institute. So I'm a co-facilitator with the uh, uh, another person, Dr. David uh, Sunday from MS Institute, we are working on this, and now we are going to train some Swahili-speaking pastors using the Main Street United Methodist Church as the venue. So we are working hand in hand with not only um, our own components here in Nashua, but uh, Nashua is the, one of the regions being addressed by the Integrated Delivery Network uh, for the problem you have uh, mentioned. And um, so the cultural connections, as well as the interfaith, they all intermingle for me. I don't see that this one is limited to this or that, because whatever problem we are dealing with, cuts across both culture and faith. And so I suppose we are making some conscious effort to uh, make some input in the area of addressing some of those problems. I just have to say that's an incredibly satisfying answer for someone who's a mental health counselor. Um, she's, it sounds like you're way ahead of it and you're already deep in the trenches of working on and in integrating things like spiritual dimensions of counseling and, but in a real world practical way, like through the integrated delivery network. So thank you. I'm looking forward to your nomination. Thank you. Anyone else? No? Well, we thank you both for wanting to participate, and your nomination will come up later in the meeting. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Now you have uh, downtown improvements. Ed Hayes. Now Ed, Mr. Hayes should come on up. So, uh, Madam Chair, as you know, the Downtown Improvement Committee was formed some years ago to advise the committee, the city, and the Board of Aldermen, the mayor, regarding downtown issues in general. 
and the help guide us regarding directions, the direction we should take with respect to downtown redevelopment issues uh, and supporting businesses and commerce and residents downtown. Alderman Clemens was very uh, instrumental in creating this committee. They also helped to advise us regarding the direction of parking meter and leased parking revenues in excess of the figure of 728,000 where they advise us as to how to spend the, that, the excess above that number, which is ranged from 100 to 150,000 about every year. So, so it is an important committee to the downtown and to the city. And one thing that I've tried to do and I, I believe has been done in the past is to try to make sure that we have downtown business owners on the committee so they have firsthand knowledge of conditions downtown and we want a variety of uh, t business owners on the committee. I'd previously nominated Michael Buckley and longstanding members have been Mary Lou Blaisdell, Rich Lannon, and others who, who have downtown businesses. Now, uh, uh, Edward has a, a salon business on Main Street. He's an entrepreneur in, in, here in Nashua. He started the business on his own. He's uh, had the business for a number of years. This is a sector of our downtown business community that is not yet represented on the committee. And he has expressed uh, an interest in this committee as well as in the direction that we're t in, the, in the initiatives we're taking downtown and the direction that we want the city to go with respect to downtown issues. So he is a ideal nominee for the Downtown Improvement Committee and I believe will actively and effectively represent our downtown business owners. And with that, uh, Edward can say a few words as to why he thinks uh, he'd like to be on the committee. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so it's my understanding that um, all of the seats that are relative to business owners are taken. Um, I am a business owner, but the reason that I am not uh, nominated <clears throat> is because I'm, I'm a resident of downtown. Um, I live right near um, Kate City or whatever the uh, church is now called on Franklin Street. Um, and so, um, yeah, I live, I live right there. Um, I walk to work every day. I walk home at 10 o'clock at night. Um, and so, um, you know, I'm, I'm in downtown. I patronize downtown businesses. I own a downtown business. I employ people downtown. I deal with all of the regular problems. Um, and so, um, and I've been sitting, uh, watching the committee for the last six months or so, um, participating, um, as minimally as I can. I'm not a minimal participator. Um, so, so yeah, um, <clears throat> I think, why do I want to be part of it? Um, I'm not really sure, to be honest with you. Um, I have a lot of opinions about um, how I would like uh, the town that I've lived in and, and spend all of my time in. Um, I have opinions as to why, how I think that, that would improve or could improve. I understand it's far more complicated than I probably give it credit for. Um, <clears throat> um, I was doing Tracy Hall's hair one day, and she was telling me that you know that there's an opportunity. You should go check it out. Um, and so she and I uh, have lots of conversations about things that are going on. And um, I assume that she knows better than I. She seems to know a lot of things. So um, and so what I've participated in so far. Um, I know that a lot of my questions tend to sort of throw a wrench into uh, the processes because I don't necessarily agree with um, a lot of what's what other people have to say, but I believe that that might be a particularly helpful um, perspective um, in the process of making decisions. So. Thank you. Alderman Clements. Thank you. Um, so uh, here's my question for you since, since you, you brought it up. Um, what, um, give me an example of something that, that you would like the committee to explore or you'd like the city to do either differently or that's new 
um, and something that you're going to hopefully bring to um, that committee if you're appointed. Yeah, so um, uh, so it would be new. So um, so it's more of a we thing than a me thing. So um, so I can sort of bring ideas. I mean, I, it's my opinion um, that we should be trying to focus on making uh, downtown a hospitable place for new businesses. Um, I think there's a lot of conversation about how to do that, and, and there's a lot of conversation about you know, like how we can put lights in different places and, and make it sort of feel more safe for people. Um, and so, um, but I think that there needs to be some sort of way that we encourage people who don't yet own businesses to own small businesses. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to see some sort of or organization, um, some way that we sort of encourage people uh, to open small businesses where there is space downtown to open small businesses. Um, we hear a lot of conversation about, um, you know, there's not enough lights for the, for the people who walk downtown to get to the places that they're going to, but I'm out after dark downtown constantly, um, cause I work really late. Um, and I don't really see a lot of places that would, th that would need the way lit for them. Um, I would, I would like to participate in, in any way that I can having op op opened a small business and, you know, you know, running one regularly. Um, to maybe help support um, new business owners who come in. And I know that the girls who own camaraderie feel similarly. Um, so um, I see when I go to other, other towns around New Hampshire that there are a lot more small businesses uh, that people would frequent uh, in other towns than there are here. Um, I would like to get a better handle on, uh, I personally am motivated to try to figure out how to get more small businesses in downtown. Um, and then when they have questions, um, maybe uh, we could participate in, in helping them uh, run a more stable business because we've all been, you know, trying our best for so long. I, I, I love that approach. Um, when the Downtown Improvement Committee was originally discussed, it was sort of a, a, a bid district which would levy a tax on everything and they decided to go a different approach for how to fund the uh, downtown but the idea was that and has always been that the funds that are raised every year should be reinvested into the downtown um, and so I think it's a, a great idea to to explore using some of those funds to help uh, an entrepreneur uh, open up a business there um, because the more that we can invest in successful businesses within the community the more successful the community is going to be and it's sort of a you know it's a cycle and so um, I think that's a great thing that you should um, definitely bring up and explore um, and uh, you'd have my support so uh, if you are approved um, reach out to me and let's talk Anyone else? Alderman Lopez. Um, so you run a salon and normally have like a certain go-to joke for that. It seems like it wouldn't go over well with you. Um, regarding entrepreneurs, though, um, are you aware of the E for All program? Um, I am. Uh, they actually came and spoke. Um, and so, um, yes, they, they came and spoke. So you would find that a good way to stimulate downtown business, improve the downtown community? Uh, that was not my opinion when they spoke. Okay. But you do want to stimulate downtown by encouraging entrepreneurs and small businesses. Yeah, most definitely. The E for All program seemed a lot more relative to uh, business starting as a general idea, um, whereas there is money allocated to particularly good ideas, mm -hmm. um, rather than the process of helping people um, um, because I, it's it's my personal belief that uh, there are lots of people who would want to start small businesses. Not all of them are going to be um, people who the E for All program seems to uh, be a, an organization that would support. Mm -hmm. um, it seemed as though their scope was really super wide uh, and not based around downtown. Um, and I'm, you know, more interested in the improvement of downtown rather than uh, their mission as a whole. 
Well, that, that's a good def differentiation of roles, too. You are specifically trying to incentivize downtown businesses, whereas they may be casting a broader net. Very um, broad. This was the first I heard that they had such a broad net, but that's also because as the downtown alderman, I just assume everybody should start business in there. So <laughs> I might be a little bit, <laughs> little bit biased. Um, and then my last question is um, the length of time we have for parking downtown being capped at 90 minutes. Do you think more time would be better? Now? Does anyone want to talk about that? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I believe that everybody, everybody on our committee seems pretty strong in um, making decisions that sort of suit themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would be no different. Um, we struggle with uh, the 90 minute parking cap. Um, I see on a regular basis people who park downtown, all, uh, park in the same spot all day long. Um, and so, and I have customers who wanna park there. It's my personal opinion um, that people should essentially be allowed to overpay for uh, proximity to what they want to go for. Mm -hmm. um, and so because we have the app and the app is like wonderful and handy until you realize that the app only gives you 90 minutes and in which case you can just game the system by going and paying the meter, which we then have to do for people because people refuse to park a hundred feet away because it's ridiculous. I personally think the system doesn't work. Um, and I think that uh, it's a really complicated uh, solution. But no, I don't like the 90 minute thing. Okay. Well, I mean, that's what you're going to be joining the committee for. So <laughs> good luck with all that. Anyone else from the Alderman? Dowd. Yes. Um, uh, I'm not going to touch the parking thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're, we're going to have a comprehensive study, I'm told, uh, soon. So I'll wait to see what the professionals come one. up with. Um, but. I, I get to be downtown a lot now that uh, I'm retired, and um, we have some people in Nashua that, that don't think we ought to spend any money downtown, and I find that very discouraging, especially some of them that came from Europe, because in Europe, the center of the town is the cultural center. It's where everyone gets together, and I've had an opportunity to travel throughout Europe, and um, the downtowns are clean, bright, uh, you know, and, and there are lots of flowers and very welcoming. Um, and I notice now with our downtown, it's the flowers and, and, the, and the plants now are really nice and the sidewalks and everything's coming along. Uh, hopefully we can repave the street, which looks like a checkerboard right now. Um, but when Main Street's finally paved at some point, um, I think our downtown really looks nice. And also we have, uh, we're, we're trying to develop along the, the riverfront and walkways and things to make downtown a welcoming place for people. And I think that's very important. And I would hope that that's your thought as well. You want me to share what my thoughts are relative yes. to that? Yes. Yeah, um, I, I really love the idea. I think that we seriously lack um, a number of businesses and business types uh, for people to uh, come to downtown uh, to do many things, right? And so it's my experience where people will sort of come for one thing and maybe participate in one other thing. Like people will come for a haircut and maybe get some coffee or get a sandwich or something. Um, I personally think that it's really important to have uh, a wider variety of things for people to do to draw a wider variety of people downtown, right? And so, um, and so I think that's all really nice, but I think that there is a belief that there is a variety of things downtown that I don't believe exist. Um, and I would like to participate in, if I can, uh, the um, expanding of uh, the offerings of, of our town. When you walk through any other towns, there are um, different types of businesses that you can walk into. Um, I, for instance, was in Concord two weeks ago, and there were probably four different businesses that I walked in that had nothing to do with each other uh, categorically, and I walked into all of them because I wanted to. And so when I'm in Nashua, I don't do that. I, I stop for food, right? And so, um, and I hope that one of the ways that we grow culturally is that we have a wider range of cultural foods because I would like that. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I definitely, I, I love the, the, the waterfront thing. I mean, I, I walked along the waterfront yesterday 
Uh, it's it's in better repair than it was a couple of months ago due to construction down there. But um, you know, but it, but it's super nice, and and I would like to see that uh, expand. And I really I really just believe that we need um, a wider array of businesses downtown. Um, you know, with the Performing Arts Center coming in, um, I think that that'll be great, and I think that that'll motivate a lot of people to be able to. Um, spend time down here, which I think might make it more appealing to people who don't currently have businesses down here. Um, and I think that it'll also help people be more aware of parking uh, that they're currently not aware of and maybe less afraid of it. Uh, Alderman Kelly. Yeah, thank you uh, for your thoughts on um, downtown. I'm also a business owner downtown, so I'm, I'm right across the street from you and I see a lot of the things that you see as well. So my question, um, is I, I love what you said. I think Concord has done an incredible job, um, and their downtown is really walkable, all kinds of different stores. Uh, do you have any ideas on how we attract that uh, to downtown in terms of getting that variety? How we attract a variety of businesses to downtown? Yep. Yeah. So um, hopefully the Performing Arts Center has a huge impact on that. Um, but I, I personally would like to see um, uh, some sort of understanding of the number of um, open storefronts um, and an understanding of, um, and maybe an, an, a, a sort of deal with uh, the people who own them to help us understand uh, what kind of spaces there are uh, and I'd like to find some way to figure out how we can um, find people who are willing to run small businesses. Small businesses are not a, um, a fun thing that you do for entertainment. It's a thing that you do that takes a lot of your time and energy, and so it requires passion. Um, it sometimes can require lots of dollars, right? And, and, so, um, and so I think that it would be a one-at-a-time kind of thing. Uh, but I think, um, assuming that all things go well with the Performing Arts Center, uh, the motivation for that might be pretty primary. It's my understanding that um, everybody's got their eyes on the Performing Arts Center right now, and most of the dollars that are being chosen to be spent are uh, Performing Arts Center, uh, are for the forward movement of Performing Arts Center. Um, so I think that what we're talking about would be a little bit... Um, would be a little bit more down the road um, and would be secondary for now, although I will push it as if it's primary because, um, you know, hopefully the squeaky wheel gets the oil. So. <clears throat> okay. Anyone else? Well, thank you so much, Ed. Um, we appreciate it. Your nomination will be coming up shortly. Thanks. And finally, Mind Falls Park, Douglas Gagnon. Yes, Madam Chair. So my nominee for the Mind Falls Advisory Park, Mind Falls Park Advisory Committee is Doug Gagney. Mr. Gagney is recently a resident of Nashua, but has lived for a long time in Hollis. And he moved in the right direction. He, <laughs> he, uh, he figured out that life in Nashua is better than Hollis, believe it or not. So I, I was actually born here. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, he served a long time on the Hollis Planning Board and owned the Mixed Border Nursery and Gardens, which you might remember on Pine Hill Road, uh, just after you crossed the Hollis line over on the, the left of the south side of the road, which was... Uh, garden designer, nursery. Uh, he has spent a lifetime in landscape design and, and uh, in nursery work. He's formerly a graduate of the University of New Hampshire in plant science, and therefore uh, he's expressed an interest in being on the Mind Falls Advisory Committee, which I'm, is a perfect fit for him, and so I'm, it's really my pleasure to nominate Mr. Gagney and uh, look forward to his service uh, with respect to one of our premier parks, that being Mine Falls, Mine Falls Park. Okay, thank you. Mr. Gagney? Uh, thank you, Mayor. 
Um, uh, yes, to uh, to amend the record slightly, I was actually born in Nashua and spent I've spent about half my life here and the other half in Hollis. So I really haven't moved very far from Nashua at all. Boomerang generation. <laughs> yes, yes, that's that's right, that's right. And, and the what caused me to return, my wife and I actually is, uh, we we care for my mother who has dementia. So uh, so we've been doing that not last for the last several years. Um, as the mayor indicated, I've. Uh, oh, by the way, I, I also have to say, just as a side note here, um, I, I thought when I first expressed an, an interest in becoming a member of the Mine Falls Park Advisory Committee that it would be sort of like a rubber stamp, you know, just there's a vacancy. Here in Nashville. Four months later, <laughs> I'm almost there, and I'm and I'm really looking uh, forward to it. So I I do commend your thoroughness, and I uh, I observe the proceedings tonight and uh, appreciate all your very thoughtful questions. Um, when, uh, when my wife and I decided to uh, close our business so that we could care for my mother, um, I was looking for uh, a way to remain outdoors because I've been outdoors really all my life. And I sort of rediscovered Mind Falls Park. Um, growing up in Nashua, uh, Mine Falls was there, but it wasn't really a thing. We we never went there, and um, and even when I was an adult, uh, I would go there occasionally, but didn't really know very much about it, and didn't always feel comfortable because I wasn't sure where I was going and so forth. Um, but anyway, this year I decided to uh, explore it, and uh, and once I become interested in something. Uh, I try to become active in it, and so um, I've used the park quite extensively over the last several months and decided that I'd like to become a part of uh, helping to uh, keep it going into the future. And I'll also say I regard Mind Falls, as, Mind Falls Park as, um, as a jewel, really, uh, for the city of Nashua. Uh, Boston, Greater Boston, has its emerald necklace. And in many ways, I think uh, Mine Falls is like that. And we were so lucky to have a park that's over 300 acres in the center of Nashua. And there's a major highway that bisects it. And uh, yet, access to both parts of the park are there. Um, and it's also um, relevance to and, uh, and proximity to um, the Milliard District, uh, which is becoming uh, uh, vibrant um, again, which is uh, a good thing to see, and and you know the plans for the Riverfront Park and so forth, or, or for the Riverfront um, in general. So I, at any rate, I um, I really do appreciate it, um, and more from um, not only I should say from a plant perspective, but uh, that certainly does interest me greatly. The, the natural world. I'm very familiar with the plants that grow there. I have concerns about some of them in terms of invasives, but uh, uh, but I'm also interested in it from um, more or less, I guess, an urban archaeology standpoint. Looking at the history of it, this is almost 200 years old. It'll be 200 years old in uh, 2023, and um, I, I think that there's an opportunity there to uh, to educate people passively and, and actively about the history of this. You know, this didn't just arise. You know, how how this came to be and and how it uh, uh, helped. Uh, it was really necessary for the formation of the mills, and the mills were necessary for the formation of the city. So anyway, I think it's a bigger thing just than just a park. So. Okay. Questions, Alderman Lopez. So first of all, it's a local tradition to get lost in Mine Falls. <laughs> you haven't gone in the mill yard and come out at Home Depot and be like, what the? Yeah. Then you're missing half the park. Yeah. But um, I really appreciated what you were saying about the plant identification. Um, I re remember when I was a Boy Scout, I was all about that because I was thinking, like, there's free food everywhere. Uh, it turns out blind people are terrible at it. Um, so like a lead walk, though, that where you can describe things to people, right. you can engage their interest, make it a little bit easier so you're not trying to figure out from a book what you're looking at. Um, I think that's a huge opportunity here. I, I almost feel bad we just wasted a couple months of your time over this summer where we could have been bringing, you know, groups of people in. Um, I see obvious potential with groups like the Powell Center Kids or the, the Boys and Girls Club. But, you know, Alan Minoyan does lantern tours, um, and they're hugely popular. I could see something like that happening in Mind Falls, and I would, I would love to see that. So I'm looking forward to your nomination. Oh, good. Thank you. And that's the uh, very same thing, of uh, very similar thing, at, at least that uh, 
that I've had in mind as well in terms of um, opening up uh, people's eyes to um, to what is there, good and bad. So, Alderman Clay. Yeah, thank you for for that, and <clears throat> sorry for my voice. Um, one of the things is that um, I'm glad you mentioned Mind Falls as a gem to the city because I agree with you. Every Sunday, I um, just about every Sunday, I have a Greyhound walking group, and we gather, and they come from all over mm -hmm. um, Massachusetts, um, a little further north, and uh, we walk Mind Falls. We've at times had 13 Greyhounds with us. Um, the only problem, and I hear this all the time, with Mines Falls are those people who allow their dogs off leashes. Mm -hmm. And um, that, is a, that is a real concern. I love the idea about uh, walking groups, and I think the more that um, we have people there um, of authority, such as yourself and so on, and, and it's not something that I would ask for the police to do all the time, but I think that would help. Um, more awareness uh, to the people and so on. I'd love to see a little bit more signage um, mm. that Great. reminds people, pick up, um, maybe the dog advisory group, that would be one of the things that they'll be looking at, <laughs> <laughs> as well as the, the importance of ma maintaining your dog on leash. And we often hear times where people say, my dog's friendly. Well, I'll tell you, my dog is friendly, but when someone says that, my next words are, well, mine's not. <laughs> Um, mostly so that they will keep their dog away. Um, greyhounds look at other dogs like, I have no idea what you are, because they only get to see greyhounds when they're, when they're coming through the system. But I really do think, and I'd love to see more signage, I think it would make it a friendlier park, um, because I've even seen dogs come running out at people that are biking, people with small children, and the dog may be friendly and may be excitable, but we don't know that and we can't take those chances. So thank you very much for stepping up, though. All right, thank you. And as, as far as signage, I agree. And uh, the problem with signage is um, it, it becomes prey to vandalism. So uh, my, I'm also involved in uh, another organization um, um, nearby, uh, which has a trail. And uh, so vandalism is a is an unfortunate uh, reality. So, thank you. Thank Anyone you. else? Okay, thank you. Oh, Alderman Clemens, I'm sorry. I, no, it's okay. I, it, briefly, <laughs> I just want to thank you for uh, stepping up to this position. I think you're going to bring uh, a lot of good to it. So thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. And your nomination will come up later in the meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Mayor. Um, Madam Chair, I don't really want to interrupt, but I need, there's been an emergency that's come up. I need to call one of the division directors. Okay. And I wanted to mention, if I could, just briefly why I support um, the uh, ballot referendum regarding sports betting. Okay. If you don't mind, so I can go. Certainly, certainly. Um, this is the opportunity to let the citizens of Nashua decide whether we're going to have sports betting. They did vote in favor of Keno. The, our two charitable gaming sites in Nashua have expressed their support. They believe that it will help them uh, generate actually more money for our, our nonprofits. They have done an incredible, incredible job in generating money for the nonprofits and the charitable organizations uh, in Nashua. The, uh, it's exceeded everybody's expectations. Uh, I, I think there's not, there's practically not an organization in town that has not received an incredible boost shot in the arm from being the chair, the, the nonprofit, the, benefic the beneficiary nonprofit of a week or 10 days at one of the charitable gaming sites. And, and uh, uh, they've, they've injected millions and millions of dollars into the Na Nashua Nonprofit Center, helping us serve poor people, people who need help, uh, uh, children who, who are in need, uh, the homeless, uh, people without food, uh, you know, many of the needy people in our community. So I think we need to, in my opinion, give the Nashua citizens the uh, opportunity to decide whether we we should proceed with, with, uh, with the gambling, the um, sports betting as the legislature has authorized. And so I hope the committee will uh, act favorably on that resolution. 
again, I would have waited until that came up, but there is this thing going on, which I really want to sort of attend to like right away. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you okay. very much. Thank you. Okay. Application to license hawkers, peddlers, vendors. There's none. Okay. Appointments by the mayor. Motion by Alderman Clements. Okay. I would um, move to recommend the confirmation of the following appointments by the mayor by roll call. Um, to the Animal and Dog Park Advisory Committee, June Lemon and Amber Logue for terms to expire September 10th, 2022. To the Business and Industrial Development Authority, Lydia Foley, John Tully, and Bradley Veer for terms to expire September 13th, 2020. Jason B. Haviland and Deborah Novotny for terms to expire September 30th, 2021. Kim Reagan for a term to expire May 1st, 2022. And David M. Dennehy, John Stabile, and Carl Andrade for terms to expire September 13th, 2022. To the office of the city clerk, Susan Lovering for an indefinite term at the pleasure of the mayor. To the conservation commission, Gloria McCarthy for a term to expire December 31st, 2021. To the Cultural Connections Committee, Eric Drewart for a term to expire December 31st, 2020, and Nanyam E. Egbuno for a term to expire July 9th, 2022. To the Downtown Improvements Committee, Edward Hayes for a term to expire December 13th, 2019. To the Historic District Commission, Ed Weber for a term to expire March 31st, 2021, and Robert G. Sampson for a term to expire September 30th, 2022. To the Mines Falls Park Advisory Committee, Jeff Hannigan, Paula Lockheed, and Douglas Gagney for terms to expire September 1st, 2022. To the National Arts Commission, John Egan for a term to expire September 1st, 2022. Okay, you I'm heard sorry, the motion. that again. <laughs> <laughs> you heard the motion. Is oh, there any uh, comments or concerns? Okay, will the clerk please call the roll? Yeah. Alderman Lopez. Yay. Alderman Kelly. Hey. <laughs> Alderman Clemens is yes. Alderman Karen. Yes. And that's four. Yays and zero nays. Okay. Motion passes. Unfinished business? Uh, there is none. New business. Resolution. R-19-162. Relative to a ballot referendum to allow sports betting within the city of Nashua. Motion by Alderman Clements. Thank you. I would move to recommend final passage. Okay. You heard the motion. Um, city clerk... A piazza is here. Um, would you give us a few minutes? And this is time sensitive for the committee to understand. Thank you. You're welcome, Good Mayor. Good evening, Madam Chair, and honorable members of the committee and other members. For the record, my name is Patricia Piazza. I'm the city clerk. Um, and so, yes, this is time sensitive due to the fact that, as you know, the, clo the closing of the file pe filing period just occurred this past Friday. We just pulled the names for the way that they're going to appear on the ballot, and we're ready to start preparing the ballot. Um, so I know that I have talked with Alderman Karen. I think she's talked with the president and everything about possibly bringing this out tomorrow night. I think it's on the agenda currently as a partial referral so that this way that the final vote can be taken so that this way we can get the ballots prepared. The public hearing still will be held with, in accordance with the law, not, more, not less than 15, not more than 30 days prior to the election of November 5th. So that probably will be scheduled sometime in October. Okay. So you understand the motion. Any questions? Alderman Clemens. No, I, I just want to, obviously, you know, I was proud to endorse this legislation as soon as I knew that the... Um, and that that passed the house, I contacted um, um, I, co I contacted the uh, city attorneys and I said, let's get this on the ballot so that we can make sure that 
we're one of the first communities, so our casinos have the opportunity to uh, get one of those or both of those licenses. So um, to me, you know, it, it, it's going to be up to the citizens. I don't see why we should have much opposition to this and <clears throat> because ultimately the citizens of Nashua are going to make the final call on it. And so we should let them do that. And um, yeah, I have no problem bringing this out uh, tomorrow either. Okay. Alderman Lopez. I have two questions to the chair to the city clerk. Um, is this like Kino where it's funding some kind of public activity or is it just we're allowed to bet on sports? That I'm not aware of. Um, and then the second thing is, what are we doing if there's like a massive outcry in the public comment period? Is it too late to take it off the ballot or? At that point in time, it is. This board has to make that decision whether or not they want to allow the voters of the city of Nashua to go ahead and vote on this question. Um, I know that I did ask for ruling from legal due to the fact that um, the time frame from the public hearing, and they felt that at that point in time, the public can go ahead and still provide their comment, but still will be, the board will, if they put this forward, will able to let the citizens of Nashua make that decision, final decision as to whether they will support or not support this motion. Right, because like 30 days before that, it's a little late to cross it out on all the ballots. Um, so that was my only question. Um, I'm in favor of letting the voters uh, make this decision. It's going to be right after the World Series, so I'm sure a lot of people really have it in their minds as to whether they want to bet on that or not. Thank you. Alderman Clee? Yes, hi. Um, as my role as state rep, I was one of the ones that did vote for this. Um, and the state is taking their piece of the pie on this. Um, whether or not it will go as much to education as Keno and all the other ones. Um, I'm not quite sure on that, to be very honest with you. Um, but I, I know we will be having a, a, an overview by the um, lottery tomorrow. The, the key to this is that um, it's a three-step process. Beyond us passing the legislation, it has to go to the voters within the municipalities. Once they choose and say yay or nay, if they did say yay, it's still not a done deal. The, um, they have to apply. They have to be approved by the state. The state has a limited amount that they will give. If one or both of our, um, our charitable gaming are selected, then we, as a municipality, this board, will have to vote whether or not we will allow them to have it. So it is a three-step process. It's not a one and done. They will jump through hoops. They will answer questions. And I believe if it doesn't work out for the city, we can revoke it. Okay. Anyone else? I think. Alderman Dow. Well, yeah. I want to finish and we'll come back, please. Alderman Dow. Uh, just a few real quick bullet points. One, uh, <laughs> um, I think it's a, it's a good idea to let the uh, voters decide. Uh, put it on the ballot and make, you know, have them make the decision. Uh, the public hearing, as far as that's concerned, that can influence people's votes, so I, I don't see that as an issue. Um, and, you know, the state uh, has, has, does not have a lot of ways for raising the money that they want to spend, and I made a point of saying don't keep taxing the cities and towns on their property taxes to make things happen. So if if it gives them some funds to do something, great. Um, uh, and as far as the two venues that might it might possibly happen to in Nashua, both of them have been extremely great uh, in controlling the, the, the gambling that they use for, for for the charities and the charities have made out really well because it's very, very, very hard for charities to raise money these days. And it's it's not only beneficial to the charities, but for the services they provide to the city, it's a good thing. So let's let the voters decide. Thank you. Alderman Wilshire. Thank you. Um, I work for a nonprofit and I tell you, we, we benefit from the charitable gaming from the organization, one of the organizations here, but I'm sure both would would uh, do serve the community well, the nonprofits well. Um, and, and I'm all for giving this to the voters. I mean, I don't think it's a whole lot different than anything we're doing now. So I, you know, I think the voters will support it. I know I'll support it. So, Alderman Lopez. So um, back to um, Alderman Clee's response. 
I, I feel like there's no jeopardy now because I'm in favor of giving it to the voters, but I also want to make sure that the voters who come to public comment aren't coming with the understanding that we've already done it, so it's too late. So if we have an additional check against it where if everybody comes out and for some reason thinks this is a terrible idea, at least they still will have their voice heard because we would have to approve it for the once the state approves us, then we can approve the sites. So I am fully in favor of this. I think it's a great idea. Um, I think this is great, too. I think it's important for the voters to to be heard one way or the other. And I think putting the, uh, unfortunately, because of the time frame, having the public hearing after we've agreed to put it on the ballot is not a difficult thing because more people will come out or not and make their decision based on that. Um, and to you, uh, President, we will certainly have this for tomorrow's meeting as an amendment and to get that done so okay so the so you've heard the motion about r-19-162 uh we need a roll call vote please okay alderman lopez yes alderman kelly yes alderman clemens is yes alderman karen yes and that's four yeas and zero nays okay so r-19-162 Two is passed. Thank you. All right. New business ordinances. O-19-052, amending NRO 93-6, impoundment of dogs, cats, ferrets, and chickens. Motion? Alderman Clemens. I would move to recommend final passage. Okay, you heard the motion for final passage. Do we have any comments? Alderman Clee. Uh, yes, I know I'm not a member, but I am the primary sponsor on this, and I would like to make an amendment to this amendment. Okay. <clears throat> to this ordinance. Um, okay. I would like to amend the wording of dog officer to reflect the actual title of the position, which is the animal control officer, the ACO. Okay, so Alderman Clee is asking for an amendment to number two, that it's listed as animal control officer rather than dog officer. Any other comments? Alderman Clee. Um, I, I do have a comment about it, but I think I, I should be waiting until after you vote on this one because I want to a comment before you do your final vote. So do I do that now or? This is when okay, you're this taking, is yes. Okay, great. Um, I, in, in, in addition to that, I'd like to make some um, clarity to this, um, to this ordinance. First off, this is not a new law. This ordinance, 93, this NRO, I'm sorry, 93-6, empowerment of dogs, cats, ferrets, and chickens found at large has been in existence since about 1977. This is not new. <laughs> there have been additions to it, including the chickens. When I um, spoke to many lawyers, I spoke to the Department of Agriculture up in the state. I asked them, the empowerment of dogs, cats, ferrets, and chickens found at large does that mean the city or the <coughs> animal control officer, or excuse me, you don't need any help from me, um, would in fact have the ability to be able to pick up the animals that are listed? And they said yes. So I went forward and said, well, there's obviously a clarity issue because of lawsuits that's being brought, because of other comments that have been made. So I chose to clarify it. I chose to make sure that it was understood that your dog, cat, ferret, and chicken needed to remain on your premises or within your control. How you choose to do that is your choice. <coughs> Again, it's not a new law. It's been around since 1977. Now, I know people keep saying, or at least the speaker kept saying everything, it was not his understanding. I think it 
it may not have been his understanding, but it's there. And I would think in his profession, as he stated, that he had been a lawyer. He would understand that impoundment of dogs, cats, ferrets, and chickens found at large, in fact, means they will remain on your property or within your control. <coughs> we added a few items under A. I believe if anybody were to care to look at it, you will see anything that is scratched out is being removed. Anything underlined is new, in fact, to the NRO. And again, this ordinance is nothing more than amendment for clarification. It adds nothing. No animal control officer will be doing anything different than they have been doing all along. It has been always their right and their ability to pick up any cat, dog, ferret, or chicken if it were off premises or in some kind of nuisance, stray, or ill. I don't believe our animal control officer will be going and picking up chickens. I'm hoping that they're not straying all over everybody's lawn. They would do it for a cat if the cat looked ill. It was also commented that a public health, we should table this because a public health officer needed to come and speak to us. We had public, public health officers speak to us, including Dr. Stephanie Roof, I mean, Wolf Rosenblum, who spoke to us all about the diseases and so on of cats that are walking around. And that these cats can, in fact, not show any sign of illness, yet have something. One of the number one health concerns are stray cats. We need to keep this under control. Again, I'm not saying we're gonna do anything different. I don't think the animal control officer would have time to go around and gather up all the cats that are running around. But it gives them the ability and the opportunity to do it well known to the public. The comments about that the cats would be taken and um, no, no person would be contacted, that's wrong. Number one, if your animal is chipped, and I think a responsible owner should put some form of identification, including a chip. I don't think that if a cat, <coughs> a cat owner says, well, I'm not required to, so I'm not going to. That is their choice, but then they take the choice that if their cat does get out, <coughs> even a cat that's kept inside a home can get out. I strongly recommend responsible cat owners will have some form of identification. I don't recommend a tag collar because cats get under everything. They could get seriously hurt. And as far as I'm concerned, this amendment to the ordinance for the clarity of it just explains to people, control your animals. I care about cats, I care about dogs. I had five ferrets, <laughs> and by the way, my ferrets were on leashes. I did take them for little walks. Most often I took them for carries, but I have never, I've not had chickens in Nashua. I grew up with chickens and they stayed in their pens. But the bottom line is that we have to be responsible animal owners, pet owners here in the city of Nashua. And I think this clarity just explains it. And the truth be told, the fact that someone thinks that this is new means that no one did understand it. So the fact I put this amendment through, I think is something that's brought conversation to the table and people now are well aware of it. Humane Society, the animal shelters and vets will first check for identification. No collar, they will scan. A chip will have the person's name and information. The first year that most animals are chipped, there is a free service that comes along with it. You do not have to continue that service. I haven't, and my dogs are chipped. My ferrets are chipped, by the way, also. Um, but the bottom line is that I th I'm finding this very upsetting. And I've spoken to you all before, and I've spoken to the public. Since the mailing went out, I don't know, I'm assuming that this is what this was all about. My life has been a little bit of turmoil between the phone calls, not just saying don't do it, but people saying thank you, thank you for putting this up. The phone calls that say <coughs> this is a crazy ordinance, this is a crazy law, have too often come with a threat. A threat telling me they know where I live, a threat telling me that they know that I have two dogs, and I don't know if that's what the intent was, but it was cruel.
I don't think it was fair that these lies were spread. I don't think it was fair that these lies and misdirections were spread. There is under no circumstances when someone's animal will be, will be picked up and euthanized and not given the owner the opportunity. I apologize for being so upset, but my life has been turned upside down. I fear when my husband goes for a walk with our dogs that someone will try to hurt him or hurt them. I think we have good citizens. I try to look for the silver lining in every bad situation. And my take here is we have incredibly passionate animal lovers here in the city of Nashua. And I thank goodness for them. But please understand, this is not a new law. This is a clarification of an existing law. The animal control officer will not do anything more than he has already done or she will do in the future. And thank you for letting me speak. I appreciate that. Anyone else? Alderman Clemens. Thank you. Um I just wanted to come at this with a, a, a not a different perspective, but from a perspective of a of a person that has a cat. I have a an indoor cat, and my wife and I got her from the Humane Society, and she's um, she's chipped, uh, and. They don't know. So a gentleman brought this cat in because it was um, hanging around and really friendly, and um, but it seemed to not be, you know, all of a sudden it just appeared out of nowhere. So, um, so they brought her in, and she's a beautiful white cat. She's she's gorgeous, um, and we've taken her and we've made her an indoor cat. And um, she, every once in a while, will get out. And as an animal owner, as a cat owner, that, that scares me for a number of reasons because we have, you know, predators in, in uh, Nashua. We have uh, fox and um, coyotes and hawks and things like that that she's an all-white cat, very easy to spot. So, <clears throat> I actually appreciate the fact that this was brought forward um, because it was always my fear that, you know, well, she's a cat and she got out. And when you see cats on the street, you tend to think, oh, okay, it's an outdoor cat. And nobody pays it any mind and drives by, you know. Um, now, while she would be very easily identifiable, um, it still was pause for concern that somebody might see her and we might be out looking for her and nobody would know the difference. Now, if you lose a dog and there's a dog roaming around and you've never seen that dog before, most people would say, oh, I wonder if it's lost. But you don't think that about a cat. And so I just appreciate this because from my perspective, it was, is that, you know, if my cat got out, I could call the animal control officer and I could say, hey, can you be on the lookout for my cat? And the animal control officer would say, absolutely, that's my job. Um, you know, and so in addition to that, with the chickens, um, up in Concord, I had a, a friend that moved in and their neighbors had chickens and the chickens would go over the fence and it became kind of a, a, a problem and they had to call the animal officer and the animal officer took care of that problem as well. And so where we have chickens now, I think that's a, a good amendment to this. And the other thing I, I, I think is what's important for people to understand is that this is just a reiteration of state law. 
So we're not doing anything really different. We're just reiterating state law. And we're saying to our citizens, please keep your animals on your property. I don't really think that's too much to ask, especially when kids have, um, you know, they play outside in the yards, they have sandboxes, cats go in there, they use them as a litter box. I mean, those are nuisance things that if we can have an animal control officer come and say, well, you know, if you, you see the cat, call me again or whatever. But I, I just think that, um, you know, with an animal comes responsibility. And that responsibility is incumbent upon the animal owner uh, to make sure that their animal is safe and to make sure that they're not being a nuisance at large. So for those reasons, um, I'm gonna support this. Anyone else? Before we uh, do a final vote, we will have to do a roll call on the amendment to change the title from dog officer to animal control officer. Okay, yep. so would you please yes. call the roll? Uh, Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Clemens is yes. Alderman Karen. Yes. And that motion passes four to zero. Okay, so. We are now on final passage of 0-19-052. And would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Clemens is yes. Alderman Karen. Yes. And that motion passes four to zero. Okay, so 0-19-052 is passed. Okay, next ordinance 0 19 053, authorizing signatures for contracts less than $1,000. Do I have a motion? Alderman Clemens. Yes, I would move to recommend final passage. Okay, and um, Ms. Kleiner is here to speak on this particular. Good evening, Kim Kleiner, I'm Director of Administrative Services. One of um, the administrative services functions is final review of contracts. So we ensure that the contract has gone to legal, had the necessary sign-offs, gone to risk management, had the necessary sign-offs, and um, if needed, come to the Finance Committee and had necessary approval if it's a multi-year contract to the full board for that approval. And we ensure that all this is done prior to the mayor's signature. So as it stands now, the mayor is the only one that is authorized um, to enter the city into any type of contract. Um, that was all well and fine, <laughs> um, and it has been that way I don't know for how long, certainly my four years here, but um, what we have realized lately is we have some everyday contracts, expenses that are below generally $1,000, um, and it really just becomes tedious for the mayor uh, to be the signatory, especially, and I can give you some examples, so pest service. Um, we all want them to come and spray our areas to make sure that there are no friendly little pests. Um, you know, it could be a $50 a month charge or a $60 a month charge and, and your contracts for a year. And, you know, it's below. Um, things like that. We would like to allow the division directors to make those decisions um, and sign those contracts. Um, generally, these are your everyday, <coughs> normal type of expenses, um, but they may last for a 12-month period, um, and you typically sign them for a year at a time. Um, so again, they're generally certainly nothing that any division director would enter into um, that's away from normal, everyday business. 
Um, and if it was, um, that division director would be responsible for certainly having a conversation with the mayor. Um, but this really is just so that City Hall can get its normal business done in a timely fashion. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Alderman Lopez. <laughs> Thank you. Dang, pest control is here so often, the mayor cannot personally be bothered. Sorry, I, I worked with pest control every every week in my previous occupations. <laughs> I enjoyed speaking with them, but I understand not everybody else does. <laughs> okay. Alderman <laughs> Kelly. Uh, yes, uh, Ms. Kleiner, I apologize that I, um, I was hoping to connect with you, but I just had a couple of questions. So the first paragraph there, um, am I understanding it correctly that we wouldn't see any um, amendments to contracts at the finance level? No, um, good question. So generally, um, for contracts of these at this level, um, they wouldn't come to the finance committee. They're below the threshold. Um, considering that they're below $1,000 in nature, um, again, these would just be a contract um, that, because we have everything reviewed by risk and legal, would be reviewed by them and then go up to the mayor and wait for his signature. Um, they wouldn't be something that would normally require finance approval. Okay, so if we approve a million dollar project and then there's change orders, those will still come to finance? Correct. Though so that's the okay. current arrangement. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. And I, I think I'll just ask this to you because I posted before, um, I am 100% for making things more efficient. I know you guys have a lot on your plates. Um, when we raised the uh, amounts that comes to the finance committee, I did mention that, you know, the less oversight, you know, it, the buck does stop with us in terms of making sure everything is, is, is kosher. Um, so I just, I wanted to hear your opinion on, um, on that in terms of oversight and, and um, making sure that things are, hello? Okay, I'm sorry, Alderman Kelly. Hold on, please just turn on our ice cream truck. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know if I, if I dropped off. I was like, is that hold music? Sorry. Um, so, anyways, I was just asking your your opinion in terms of, um, you know, letting go of that oversight and, and, and allowing uh, the heads to, to be more efficient. So one of the items that the mayor has um, asked us to look into and we are currently investigating um, now is a software that will handle contract management. So right now within the city, um, a division director um, may have a contract and we've worked it out and they've commonly worked it out with purchasing and purchasing um, has given them some verbiage and correct and it goes to legal and they do their magic um, and it goes to risk and she makes sure of insurance of insurance purposes but this is all done via email um, not the most efficient way to do things um, so or the most secure or, yeah <laughs> so we are currently um, evaluating a number of different softwares that will all have workflows within them um, and that will not only ensure the necessary sign-offs and approvals, um, but it will speed up the process and make sure that it's not getting hung up in someone's inbox. Um, and it's really, it's a software that I'm familiar with from private industry, um, and for a city this size is, is something that I think we would expect to see. Um, so. There's a group of us, um, myself and um, Director Cardignone and Janet Graziano from Finance and Dan Kukin from Purchasing that are, are reviewing different softwares out there and hope to come back to you all with a recommendation. That's really great information to hear and I, you know, I, I look forward to seeing that because as uh, Alderman Lopez pointed out, email is not the most efficient or the most secure. Uh, so. Thank you for your answer. Um, I appreciate it. Welcome. Anyone else? Okay. So, could we have a roll call, please? Uh, yes. Um, Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Clemens is yes, and Alderman Karen. Yes. 
And motion passes four to zero. Okay, so 0 19 053 is uh, passed. Okay, do we have uh, any discussion? Any public comment? Oh, yes, Alderman Kelly. Sorry, I'm that's okay. From you, back off. Um, I just quickly wanted to comment on um, Alderman Clee's um, discussion during the um, ordinance with the cats and the chickens and all that. Um, I appreciate the silver lining that we have a lot of passionate people in the city, uh, but I would ask our citizens to engage in a way that makes everyone feel comfortable and safe. Uh, we can all disagree without um, making people feel um, unsafe, for sure. So um, I hope that we can all come back around to, to working that way on any issue, no matter how passionate you are about it. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, public comment, none. Remarks by Alderman. None? Okay, no public, non-public session. Motion to adjourn. Alderman Clements. I move to adjourn and we need to take a roll call. Yes, roll call please. <laughs> I'm sorry. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Clemens is yes, and Alderman Karen. Yes. And that's four to nothing. We are adjourned. Okay, motion is carried, and meeting is closed at 9.22 p.m. Thank you, everyone.